Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn here with a review of the Rug Ryu 4 SLC 360 ARGB, which as you can see has an absolutely massive display. 6.67 inch curved AMOLED display capable of 2K resolution and also one that you can customize with various different backdrops, including using your own GIFs and videos and put a number of different readouts onto it so you can see things like CPU and GPU temperature and other performance metrics at a glance. As you can see, it's quite striking. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the setup process for it and a few things I discovered along the way. I want to do some thermal testing at the end for gaming and benchmarking as well. So stick around to see that. But I want to talk about a number of different interesting highlights of this and the little quirks that I discovered along the way while crafting with it in the Corsair case that you're seeing in this build. And I'll leave the specs of this so you can easily find those down below as well. But what you'll see here is that you have everything you need for an AMD or Intel setup, including the different brackets and screws that you need for both of those. Also has an interesting design with the tubes coming out of the radiator where they're meant to basically go straight down towards your CPU block. And then obviously the display is also removable and comes separately. As you can see, it's quite large and chunky. So it does take up quite a lot of sort of space in the PC setup, covering over some of the tubing and the wiring, perhaps making the build look a bit neater by the end of it, especially if you're putting this into a black case, it ends up looking quite stealthy, apart from the display obviously shining brightly there. But this setup is very straightforward and pretty easy to do. It comes with pre-applied thermal paste and the fans are also daisy chained together. So the wiring for that is pretty straightforward as well as I'll show you in a second. And obviously we've got a lot of Asus and Rug branding on the thing. Even the thermal paste has it here with that. But you've got the little Asus logos on the fans as well. And they are ARGB fans as mentioned. But they're daisy chained together so you only have a couple of cables to deal with at the end. Now this has an interesting design in more than one way. You'll notice the radiator, for example, has lots of screw holes on it. And I'll show you why that's interesting in a minute. But the design is immediately familiar when you've set it up like this to give you a view of what it looks like roughly. You can see the tubes coming down from the top there. This is very similar to Lee and Lee's Hydra Shift 2, which is a cooler that I've recently dealt with. And that's also just recently released. A lot smaller screen on that one, but the tubes come straight down in a similar way. However, this is going to vary depending on the case, because as you can see in this one, I had to offset them slightly, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But you can see that the display also slides from left to right, so you can position it depending on how you want it. Now, on the radiator, the tubes are adjustable, so you can customize the design by making them go in a certain different direction. You can just twist and turn them, they can either go right or left. They can go in different directions. There's some nice solid housing on there, basically allowing you to set this up in the case. And that's going to be useful depending on the build you're doing and the case you're building in. Because if there isn't much room, you might find, as I do, that it proved a little bit tricky. When I first went to install this, I found it very difficult to get the block in place over the CPU. And that was because of the tubing and the way it's set up there. And you can see how close the radiator is to the CPU in this build. In a different case that was taller and the radiator was further away, you might be able to get the tubes to go a bit straighter down, but you can see here I've had to bend them off at an angle and curve them back again. It's actually designed in this way quite cleverly because what you can do is basically adjust the tubes on the pump end as well. So both at the radiator end and the end that sits over the block, you can adjust the tube direction and therefore basically twist them round so that they don't take up that space. The other thing that's interesting is the way it sits into the case. So obviously top mounting this is a logical thing to do with this cooler. But what I discovered here is that it actually sits into the bracketing for 140 millimeter fans. So in this case, because of the Infini Rail on Corsair's 4000 case, you have to adjust this push it out towards the back so that you can then screw the screws into the bracketing, which would be for normally for 140 millimeter fans. So essentially you've got a wider all in one cooler and a standard 360 millimeter one, and it'd be screw holes for both. Now, as I mentioned, this will work with both AMD AM5 socket motherboards, 
and Intel motherboards as well. For AM5, you have to remove the pre-installed standoffs on the motherboard, then use these brackets that come with the cooler, popping them in place, reusing the screws, and then setting that up like that. And then you just simply seat the cooler down over the top. With Intel, things are a little bit different. This cooler will only work with LGA 1700 socket motherboards and 1851, which is the new Core Ultra setup. And that's what I'm using for this build is Core Ultra 5245K. And I'm going to show you the testing for this as we go through. But I'm mentioning this because the older LGA 1200 socket or before that setup won't work. You only get one bracket here, which is for 1700 socket and 1851, which is an interesting point of note. But I guess Asus assumes that people will want to use a newer setup with a new cooler like this rather than an older Intel setup. So something to note there. But the bracket fits onto the back of the motherboard Intel sockets there, pushes through to the front, then has these little plastic clips that go off that and they just seat down over the top of it and then the cooler just sits on top of that and obviously the screws for holding it in place are already on the cooler already mounted there rather than separately like it normally would be. So the installation for both is fairly straightforward but you're limited in number of options of motherboards that you can use it on so you want to use it with newer hardware is essentially what I'm saying here. But there are some nice features like the ability to move it around once it's installed and obviously hide the cables away, like I mentioned. And the wiring setup of it is also very straightforward. There's a single cable that comes out of the pump itself that plugs into the AIO pump header is a logical one to use. And then you've got a couple of cables coming out of the fans, which logically you plug into the CPU fan header to control the fan speed and the 5 RGB header. Now, as Zeus notes, if you use the AIO pump header for the pump, you might find that it runs at maximum speed, which can cause it to get a little bit louder. It's worth knowing that. But I find connecting the CPU fan and AIO pump headers in that way is the most logical thing to do. It stops the bias complaining and it ensures everything's controlled by your motherboard really easily. And then once the display's popped in, that just connects up to the USB port on the motherboard, so on the bottom of the motherboard. So that's really easy to connect up as well. So the wiring is very straightforward. And obviously it means that you can use it with a variety of different motherboards as well. You don't have to use an Asus motherboard with this cooler. Things get interesting because the display is controlled by Asus InfoHub software, not by Armory Crate. So this is a dedicated software specifically allowing you to control this cooler and change the display on it and other things and obviously tweak it. So you can see as standard, you only get four different backgrounds to choose from and you can choose one zone or split mode. Split mode was a bit weird because it couldn't seem to get a background to apply to it. So that was strange. But one zone essentially has this background across the curved display and then you drag and drop the things that you want in there. So the CPU fan speed, for example, the temperatures, the voltage, the frequency, the usage, you can see it all on the right hand side here. I chose CPU and GPU temperatures as the main readouts that I'd want to be able to see on the fly. But you can also select a number of different ones that you can see here on the right hand side. The options are fairly limited, but these seem to be the basic ones that most people want to use in their system. Now in terms of the CPU and GPU temperature readouts, I noticed there was an ever so slight discrepancy between what's on the display and what Afterburner was presenting in games, but only by a couple of degrees. So it does seem to update in fairly real time. So it is trustworthy and logical. Now in terms of the background, you can use your own videos and images. You can use GIFs. So you can just head over to Giphy and download some and then add them to the media library in here change where it's cropped to and then apply that to the display and then have that showing you can pick a number of different ones to add to the media library and you can choose to cycle through them so there's an option there which basically just cycles through a number of different backdrops obviously some of them are pretty distracting depending on your choice now the quirk of this system is because it uses a 5 volt rgb connector for the fans You'll need to use RGB software for your motherboard. So with this setup, I have to use Armory Crate. So I'm now using two different kinds of software to control the display and the RGB for the fans. This is a shame, but it does mean that it's more universal because you don't have to download Armory Crate on an MSI motherboard, for example, because you use MSI Mystic Lite to control the RGB lighting there for the fans. So it's pretty straightforward. 
Now let's get into some of the thermal testing. I'm going to start with benchmarking and stress testing using OCCT and then we'll get into gaming. So OCCT runs for an hour of stress testing and you can see that the CPU temperatures got up to 70 degrees C maximum, which isn't too bad. There weren't any errors and this is a pretty good temperature for this CPU and didn't seem to have any problems. It was Cinebench, I also got a decent score out of it and found again that the temperatures are good here as well. We're also looking at a maximum of 70. So there's no reason to be concerned there and I was impressed by it. Although maybe the pump is a little bit loud. I'll allow you to hear some of that at the end so you can get an idea of what you think and listen for yourself. It's not the loudest I've heard, but it is a little bit loud. But even as Zeus notes that it can get loud, as I said. Now on some real world testing with gaming. So I'm running 4K games here and I'm also using a 4070 Ti as a reference. But what I found is general experience through a number of games, as you'll see here, with the data in the top left, so you can see what's going on, is that it seems that basically the CPU is running somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees C, which is pretty impressive, frankly. Now, this is obviously a 360 millimeter cooler, and you've seen from the setup that I've got quite a few intake fans. So there's eight intake fans and an exhausting out of the top and the rear. But with that setup, it's not getting too loud, and yet it's delivering really good cooling for the CPU, and the GPU temperatures are also decent as well. And so this setup has worked really well for me in that instance. And it's been a really good cooler across a number of games for that as well. So it's just not getting too hot, even under heavy load, pushing some pretty intense games and some demanding ones as well. So a nice experience all round and an impressive one. Now it is an expensive bit of kit, it's worth noting this isn't a cheap cooler obviously, but you are getting a large display and a nice setup here, obviously with some interesting highlights in terms of the RGB lighting on the fans for example and the setup and wiring of it and the fact it will only work with newer motherboards. So little things to bear in mind. Stick around now and I'll leave a clip so you can hear what it sounds like when gaming to get an idea of the fan noise. Obviously you have to take into account the case fans as well. But there was a little bit of pump noise under heavy stress testing, but general gaming experience was really good. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos, you might well find them interesting or useful, and most importantly, have a great life.